الرسول فخذوه وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا واتقوا الله واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب Uh, what I said is when you see that which you like, you should take preemptive measure to seek Allah's help and protection from the evil eye. This is preemptive before it happens. Now, if you want to seek Allah's aid and protect him from evil eye, and note this is a precautionary, one of the precautionary measures before anything happens. In addition to dhikr and qira'ah, one of the things is if one uh, presumes they themselves have an evil eye uh, or others, the Prophet ﷺ gave us some guidance on that. This is to prevent, this is to prevent an evil eye. When you see, for example, a beautiful kid, when you see a smart kid, when you see a nice house, when you see a nice car, when there's a significant achievement, you don't want an evil eye to affect no one. So what would should be on the tongue of Muslims is what the Prophet Sallallahu told us. And it's not MashaAllah. It's not MashaAllah. I repeat what I repeated before. It's not MashaAllah. And it's not La ilaha illallah. And it's not Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And it's not MashaAllah la quwwata illa billah. And it's not Tabarakallah. It's none of those. Those are praise words. They're beautiful. They're maybe dhikr. They're good. They're nice. They're to be used. But everything gotta be used in its proper time, in its proper place. You can use these as dhikr on your own time. The question is, what is used to be sought, seek refuge in Allah from an evil eye? What's the term? You most definitely, for example, don't knock on wood. You want the proper guidance, the proper medication to seek saving from, in, uh, to, to seek refuge in Allah from an evil eye, or so you yourself will not hurt others. You say, Allahumma barik lahu. Allahumma barik lahu if he's male. May Allah bless him. Allahumma barik lahu. Allahumma barik lahu. If she's a woman, Allahumma barik laha. May Allah bless her. If 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 uh, if it's a car someone has, barak Allahu laka fiha. May Allah bless it for you. Making dua and blessing for that matter or that person. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the effect of an evil eye is fact Bukhari Muslim in the line haq look at this hadith Abu Umama narrated that Sahel ibn Hunayf on the authority of his father they went and with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam on a journey and they reached to a valley Sahel washed himself and he actually was handsome and he had soft skin and a good figure a man passed by. His name is Amr ibn Rabi'ah. He looked at him as he was bathing and he said, Wow, what a nice, delicate figure. Just as he uttered that, Sahel fell unconscious. And the people went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu said, Who do you suspect? You suspect anyone? Man bi. They said, Yes, we suspect Amr ibn Rabi'ah. The Prophet said, Bring Amr ibn Rabi'ah here. They, he brought Amr ibn Rabi'ah, the Prophet reprimanded him and sort of scolded him. He said, why try to kill your brother in faith? Did he pull a knife or anything? No, it's by his eye he was trying to kill him that the Prophet meant. Why not say upon seeing the fascination of your, if you're fascinated with your brother, may Allah bless you. Make dua for his barakah. This is the point of it. The Prophet ﷺ said, wash off the trace of envy by making dua of barakah. He didn't say you say mashallah. He said you say la ilaha illallah. Amr, the man who caused the uh, 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 evil eye, he was ordered to bathe, wash his elbows, thighs, his hands, and pour water all over himself while he was in a, in a, in a what would be called today a tub. Then the contents of that tub were poured over Sahel ibn Hunayf. And upon doing that, Sahel recovered. This is an authentic hadith. It's in Musnad Ahmad and it's in, in Ibn Majah. 
So the washing off, the one who caused the NVI was ordered to take a bath. His leftover were in a tub and that leftover were poured over the one he envied, he affected. This is after it happens. But before that, the Prophet ﷺ said, why didn't you make dua? What dua did he say? Did he say, MashaAllah? Did he say, La ilaha illallah? Did he say, make salah on the Prophet ﷺ? He said, إِذَا أَرَأَ أَحَدُكُمْ مِنْ أَخِي مَا يَعْجِبُهُ فَلْيَدْعُ لَهُ بِالْبَرَكَةِ The Prophet ﷺ said, to eliminate the effect from your eye, make dua of barakah for your brother. Say, Allah mubarak lahu. May Allah bless him. Allah mubarak laha. If she's a woman, may Allah bless her. If it's knowledge, barakallahu laka fi ilmik. May Allah bless your knowledge. If it's a car, may Allah bless your car. He didn't say, say, mashallah, at this time. He didn't say, say, la ilaha illallah. Al Minnawi said, yad'u bil barakah. You make dua in barakah. You say, Allahumma, may Allah bless him. Some said, what about the verse? How could you say it in the verse in the Quran? In the, in the Quran says, uh, it, would, it would have been better for you to say when you entered your garden that which Allah wills. MashaAllah, there is no power but with Allah. The verses say, MashaAllah. This verse has nothing to do with the protection from the evil eye, from the hasad. It's telling one to admit that which he got is from Allah and not to let his ego and pride get to him. And admit it's from Allah. MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. So MashaAllah means whatever Allah wills. And you say it, and it's good to say it. When you see good things, and when you see the creations, and when you see things you like, you say MashaAllah. Al-Qurtubi said, commenting on this verse, he says it means whatever you got, Allah selling them, whatever you got of wealth is from Allah, not from your own power. So you can't use that dua, MashaAllah, which is nice, which is beautiful. You can't use it though for protection from an evil eye. You would be given knowledge that the Prophet ﷺ never gave. You'd be given medicine to something that is for a totally different disease or sickness. In a nutshell, if you see something you like, you make dua of barakah in it. Allahumma barak law, Allahumma barak laha. If someone sees a child and you know they have, for example, you have a child and you know they said, wow, he's so beautiful. Wow, he's speaking at that young age. Don't be ashamed to tell him, and don't, and the other person shouldn't take offense at it. Tell him, say, Allahumma barik lahu. Make dua of barakah for the child. If you are memorizing and gaining knowledge, or you have something good going for you, or a job, or a car, or a relative sees it, and you know it may be an evil eye, then tell them, make dua of barakah. Allahumma, revive a sunnah that's dead. I, I, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised newlyweds. When you see newlyweds, when you go visit them, in Tirmidhi, in Nisa'i, Ibn Majah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to say to them, Barakallahu lakuma wa alaykuma wa jama'a baynakum ala khair. May Allah bless for you. May Allah, Barakallahu lakuma, may Allah bless you both. Wa alaykuma and bless and be upon you. Wa jama'a and unite you gather, uh, together in goodness. This is precautionary for even I. If you assume someone already has an evil eye and there's proper signs of that, then there's Quran, there's proper dhikr. There, if you suspect someone in particular, you can ask that person to take a shower, the leftover of a shower, you put it on someone who you assume he affected. Those are the cure after he is. Just like flu, when you don't have flu, you go get a shot for vaccination. But you don't get the shock of that shock for vaccination after you're infected for flu, with flu. So before one is affected with the evil eye to eliminate it, one of the ways is, which, which I mentioned, which you're talking about, your question, is you say, Allahumma barik lahu. Allahumma barik. It's not MashaAllah. It's not MashaAllah, I say it. Even though I know you're saying to me, scholars are saying it's wrong. MashaAllah is not to be said to eliminate evil eye. MashaAllah was never in a hadith to say that it was no authentic hadith to say that it is to a prevention from evil eye. MashaAllah, say, you see the sky is beautiful. You enter your own house, you're not afraid of an evil eye. Say MashaAllah. However, if you're afraid of an evil eye 
and you want to prevent it فَلْيَدْعُ لَهُ بِالْبَرَكَةِ Let him ask Allah for barakah in that person or in any matter that he has which you think are good. That's how it is. Also, you can recite Quran as prevention. That is what I mentioned. Now, after it falls, if someone is affected, then you got Quran, then you got dhikr, then you got uh, washing of uh, the person. You, uh, If you know someone in particular, you can ask him to take a shower. He shouldn't take offense to it. And once he takes a shower, he's left over the water. The person who's affected takes a shower in that. Inshallah, just like the hadith we mentioned of Sahel, that it will be eliminated. The point of it, what I mentioned, is when you see what you like, it's Allahumma barik. It's not MashaAllah. It's not La ilaha illallah. It's not Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. It's not Tabarakallah. These are good phrases, beautiful phrases. But for the protection of evil eye, you ask Allah for barakah in that matter or in that person. You got it?